Hey everybody, Brynn here. Welcome back to another game. Today, we're going to be continuing our King's Indian attack. It's been... Okay, we know what we're doing. Okay, we know what we're doing. Um, we're playing the King's Indian attack. And we are speedrunning it. Oh yeah. Um, nothing crazy. We're going for our normal setup. This time we don't get some sort of reverse London system. Our opponent's going for something a little bit different with uh, Fienkeru Bishop on B7. Luckily, this tells us something that we might want to do. And in my opinion, I think we want to go for a kingside attack. Yeah, baby. The reason why is because generally we want to play in the long diagonal when it's either unopposed or there's something that we can do. But since they've Fienkeru, they've neutralized the long diagonal. Now, I think playing moves like e4 are a lot more reasonable. If they ever play d5, we'll play e5 happily. And we get our king side attack going. This is looking closer to a uh, king's indian from the uh, king's indian attack from the e4 move 1 move order, which is nice. Um but I think our opponent just blundered. Uh, I think we can play h3, and this piece is lost. They might have the idea of h5, but it doesn't work here. I don't, I'm not sure if that's the idea. I feel like that might be. But we can take. And we will take. Because the thing is, sometimes this h3, h5 stuff can happen. This is called the fishing pole trap. Here it doesn't work because we control the h4 square. Okay, so they try something a little different. I think it's, again, because mainly they didn't um, notice that the, the knight was actually trapped there. And they had to go knight fd7, in my opinion. They could go knight g8, but undeveloping the knight doesn't really feel natural. Knight d7 feels a lot more natural there. Bishop c5 is a reasonable move, trying to win the exchange, but we don't need to allow it. And, uh, yeah, I think we have a great position. We are winning right off the bat here. So we don't really get too much of a classical king's Indian attack um, style position, but we'll make do. We'll try to get the uh, the best out of this that we can and try to capitalize, develop our pieces, bishop e3, queen d2, all these natural things. Bishop g5 is interesting. I want to go h4. I also don't mind something like knight d2. Oh, I have to watch out knight d2, bishop e3, whoopsies. Gotta be careful. Uh, I don't really want to take because it opens up the h-file. But at the same time, if I open up the h-file, what are they going to do with it? They could try some sort of like queen e7, knight d7, castle long. I just think it takes a while. I'm going to play one of my favorite moves here. A rook pawn move, a4. If they wish to take, then um, I'll simply recapture. Yeah, I'm going to go a5 here. This is the idea. I'm trying to weaken this side of the board so they're less likely to try and create play uh, by castling long. I, I think the biggest thing we have to worry about in these types of positions is, hey, what if our opponent tries to imbalance things? And a huge imbalance that could make things worth it for them is if they can make our king weaker than theirs, right? Then the material count matters a lot less. Like, if we get checkmated, it doesn't matter that we're up a queen, right? Um, but obviously in a position like this, I think we should be relatively happy. I'm going to play g4 just to prevent any further breaks from them. Uh, I think this is reasonable. Uh, I don't know if g4 was really too much of a concern from them, but this bishop is doing a beautiful job covering the uh, the h3 pawn, which is the only thing that can really be attacked. So this kind of nullifies anything from this rook, uh, and that's that's kind of the idea there. f6 makes sense. They're trying to open things up against my king, but I think it opens things up against them too. Queen d2 is... Um, Feels good. Feels like a good choice. I'm expecting knight c6. Um, so if they take on e5, I think that's a huge practical mistake. I can take with my knight and um, 
It's just going to immediately cause problems. So yeah, I think knight c6 is better. I'm going to play knight c3 and just continue developing. I'm not too worried about them getting a uh, protected pass pawn in the center here with uh, taking on e5. I will ultimately take with the knight, I believe. And uh, if they want to take and uh, take on e5 as well, I'm pretty happy there, actually. I'm thinking of rerouting my knight, for example, to d4. It, it's hard to imagine the position now, but I'll show it in the analysis board as well. Just imagine this pawn is gone somehow. Okay, now we have to actually deal with it because uh, they are threatening to take and actually win the pawn. I could play moves like knight a4. Knight a4 does feel really nice and comfortable. So I'm going to start with that. And if queen b4, I'm thinking knight c5, actually. Just to target this uh, this bishop on b7. Uh, because of this move, I'm expecting queen, queen b4. I don't really know if there's anything better. They could go queen c7, but then why did they play queen b6, right? Because this, this is a direct attack on them, and knight c5 does have a threat of trying to trade down, uh, which is very beneficial for us. Also, another thing to mention is not, we don't always, actually wait, because of this rook was here, I don't really think they were threatening to uh, take on e5, so my bad. So we could have ignored it and maybe played something like knight e2. I think knight a4 is still very acceptable. Um, gotta remember, sometimes rooks can, uh, can be good defensive pieces. But, um, the reason why I'm okay with them uh, getting that pass pawn on d5 is because it nullifies their bishop. And if we get like a knight to d4, even if it was like equal material, I feel like that would still be extremely good for us. Because it's hard to do anything uh, for them. I'm just going to go knight c5 here. I'm threatening knight takes e6, for example. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I take it. Like if they take on e5 or something, I'm probably going to take on b7. Um, I could also take back. I, I have to be careful how I take back because there might be some like knight f3 check actually. Got to be careful there. That I don't uh, lose to some complications. I, I think taking on b7 is the, the best way. Yeah, so they defend. Very natural. And I'm thinking of taking here. After taking on f6, there's two ideas. There's knight takes g5. If knight takes g5 here, pawn takes g5, queen takes g5, we do give back the piece. Um, but we do clarify some things. I don't know if it's in our interest, though. Uh, because we don't really have a direct attack. Queen f6, I guess, is possible to attack the rook. but And that, I, I guess, does actually attack the... Knight as well, which is nice. If they take our knight, then we just take the rook. That actually is starting to look good. Knight takes g5. At first, I wasn't sh so sure. It was not clear to me. Pawn takes, queen takes. Knight takes d4, queen f6. If they go rook g8, then we can take here on d4. And we did just win a ton of material. Or we can play things slower and play like rookie one. Rookie one also feels good. Yeah, let's just play rookie one. I don't know why I'm looking at counter sacrifices when we can always just play simple chess. And uh, the point of the series kind of is just to show, hey, you can play simple chess, not really make too many weaknesses um for yourself just kind of play normal looking moves and how to put practical pressure on your opponents without making moves that will cause mistakes because a lot of the games i've been playing lately uh even on the series have been extremely complicated when maybe they don't have to be so i want to try to reduce the complications that we get from that one because i think that would just be more instructive. I want to get a knight to f5. That's kind of a dream scenario. Like I'm looking at knight h2 right now. 
which is a funny looking move because I want to bring it to g3 if I could. I'm also looking at queen e3. Queen e3 threatens to take on e6. Let's play knight h2. Let's just see what they're going to do. It's not like they can really do anything immediate that's going to bother me. e5, I can... Uh, I can take it or leave it. It's the first time I've used that phrase like correctly, honestly. Uh, so the threatening rook takes h3. Gotta just be mindful of that, but we can be with the simple knight to f1. I'm expecting queen d6. If they go queen c7, things become a lot easier for us because we can go queen e3 with tempo against e6 and then play knight g3. Yeah, um, that's kind of expected. I would love to play here. Yeah, let's play here anyways. And I want to go knight g3 and then knight f5 check is a threat. And the idea is it's not just bringing the knight to f5 that is interesting me right now. It's also bringing the knight to h5. It's hard to defend f6. They have to play something like rook f8 maybe. But do remember, they do have other pieces on the board. Their knight on c6 isn't the worst piece ever, actually. Um, their bishop on c8 is purely defensive, though. And arguably, our bishop is much better. The rook on h8 is okay. And yeah, I was going to mention, their rook on uh, a8 was doing nothing. So they, they bring it in the game. Knight g3, creating the threat of knight f5 check. Mine the pin. Uh, this square is actually not defended by anything right now. So in that f5 check is uh, threatening to win the queen. If they end up moving here, then it might allow other things. Like if king f7, then I can look at knight to uh, h5. I can also take on g5 here. This looks extremely interesting. The, the thing is, it does hang g3. So do I allow that? I'm not sure. That might be too much. Let's um Let's just go knight h5. They're they're forced to defend it with rook h6. And then we can take on g5 where it's even stronger. And we don't hang our knight. Again, I'm trying to keep things simple. Sure, there's difficult tactics involved still, but um they're all predicated upon, hey, you know, we're not trying to hang anything. We're not trying to give them any counterplay. And now we can take on g5. And I think this wins on the spot because we have the double threat of rook takes f6 and queen takes h6 and queen g7. So I guess it's a triple threat. Is there anything else? Nope. This looks good. Cool. Queen takes g5. And I think it's game over. It doesn't matter that this is hanging. Uh, this is much more important. We can also just take on f6 at that point, I think. Takes, queen takes, and then we win d4. That looks extremely good as well. Yeah, so here, again, there's a... Rook takes f6, actually. And they can't actually defend this rook anymore. They have to take. There's not really another option. And the attack does continue here. After queen takes f6. Uh, king g8, there's queen g7 mate. So they have to go king e8. And then, I believe there's knight takes e6. Uh, I don't know if rook takes e6 also works. But for the sake of simplicity, let's keep it simple. Knight takes e6. Looks good. Is there knight g7 check? Knight g7 check looks like checkmate. Yes. And that is why you look at everything, right? Look at everything. Make sure you are doing your due diligence and uh, not just sticking with one line. Knight takes e6 wins, but, you know, when you can go for more, go for more. So, yeah, our opponent played d5, e5. Um, here, again, they could have considered some sort of h5. There's not enough compensation, though, uh, because there's no queen h4. Sometimes these lines can actually happen, and black is fine if not winning in these types of positions 
uh, for example, Nori Lopez, you can see some something like this, uh, where your opponent plays an early knight g4. Generally, I don't believe in it. Uh, if you are in the situations where you can't take it, ignoring it is also good, because eventually they're going to have to waste time by bringing the knight back. And they also made this extremely weakening move, h5, right? So not only are they wasting time, but they are um, creating weaknesses. And uh, generally in those positions, it's like plus two, plus three, so... Uh, computer generally gives a huge advantage so uh, we did end up winning a piece though which is great and yeah we just played normally uh, I don't think a4 was necessary we could have easily exchanged uh, here gone into something like this same thing with like g4 uh, go queen d2 maybe bring the knight to e3 or something we can get a perfect position nothing wrong here never really scared of f6 um, they can castle long, it just doesn't matter, we're up a piece, right? And uh, most importantly, there's not really an easy breakthrough, because our Finketer Bishop is uh, pretty safe, which is awesome. So, a4, c5, um, and I ended up going for taking on g5, as, as we see here, queen d2. And uh, yeah, so this is what I was mentioning before, even if we are sometimes even... Uh, even on material here like if we just imagine everything's off the board except for like the knight and bishop and then we get our knight to d4 sometimes we can just still have an advantage just because it's a good knight versus a bad bishop um and that's something important to mention and th the funny thing is it's uh we have a uh, we're, we're two pawns down right now but we are a piece up so we're only plus one and even still, if it's like a good knight versus bad bishop, sometimes it's even worth like a pawn or two. Uh, because you're just so positionally winning. Like, yeah, again, if you can play your knight to d4 here, uh, let's just say queen e7. I don't know. It's hard to suggest a move. Knight d6 is also a problem, but let's pretend it's not. Uh, because knight d4 is coming anyways. And uh, yeah, let's just pretend that... That there's no knight d6 which is also completely crushing but if we get a knight here like it just it just overwhelms the bishop on b7 and uh funnily enough i actually have a classical game that's kind of similar to this of uh where i got a good knight versus bad bishop it was in a french defense game i'm not sure exactly when that one will come out i think it's probably gonna take a few months uh because i only post one of my tournament games a week uh, to avoid like preparation and also because uh, then I can spend a bit more time analyzing them but uh, yeah there's a similar situation in that game where I ended up sacrificing a full pawn just to play some sort of like a knight on d4 and it was completely crushing so hey remember quality of your pieces matter not just how much material you have the quality of it equally as important and uh, if you don't believe me look at the uh, the opera game right uh, Morphe had a lot less material, but did not matter. That's uh, one of many cases proving that. But yeah, knight c5. Um, there's always like tactics of knight takes e5 in the air to watch out for. Like even here, uh, I don't know if like e5 works. Um, it definitely could. That's something to be cautious about. Uh, I don't think it, it's really working here. We're up a piece, so even if we lose a piece, the position just gets ripped open in our favor, I believe. So... That's why I was kind of okay with going into this stuff. And um, again, the second we get our knight here, we're threatening knight to f5. Check, winning the queen. That's why they move their king. But again, uh, this just wins by force. I could have also played queen takes g5 here, but I was a little bit less convinced by a line like either rook takes f6 or queen takes f6 here. Um, here, it's actually just mate. And uh, if they go here, then we can take with check. So looks like it's actually perfectly fine. I uh, didn't really have to worry about it. But hey, I, I preferred playing uh, Knight h5 first. And uh, maybe in retrospect, because of that, they should have taken on h5 to prevent this. Who knows? And then go like King h uh, or King g7. Even still, there's probably h6 here. h6 and then uh, h4, <laughs> which is a funny idea to uh, get them to the square just so they can't prevent me from opening up another line by taking on... Uh, on g5 here but that's kind of all semantics and not really important at all uh the most important thing to mention in general is uh is way back when that you got to focus on the quality of your pieces and 
a piece that gets attacked with e5. Hey, I understand you want to play something like knight g4, but the quality of it's low because it's going to get trapped. Knight d7, it's a great piece though. Um, you can play moves like c5. Like, I, I think uh, they have a totally playable position with c5 and knight c6 coming. They have ample pressure on e5. They're probably going to end up casting long, uh, short, maybe. Uh, which obviously is into my attack, but that's another story. And game continues. Um, but material matters, and they didn't keep it. That's going to cover it for this game. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.